Having the, uh, the UK's biggest chemistry set to play with to enthuse and educate and entertain kids is an uh, opportunity too good to miss. By bringing Tim into the Bristol Chem Labs project, then we had somebody who knew all the wrinkles, all the problems that teachers faced. So we were then able to set up a program whereby we could bring students into our laboratory facilities and give them an opportunity that they simply couldn't experience at school. I love chemistry, I love practical chemistry, I love enthusing school students and helping to train teachers to be able to enthuse school students as well. So that's probably the reason I do this job and have carried on doing it. I just wanted when I first came here to provide something a little bit extra for pupils, something really different. Um, so it started off with a Year 7 Science Club and we found that so many pupils wanted to join, so many pupils wanted to come just to mix chemicals or set things on fire that, you know, and you don't always get the opportunity to do that in lessons. So then the next thing was a Year 8 Science Club because when the Year 7's pupils left, to go to the year eight. They wanted to carry on in the science club. We do other things for then for other members of the community because I thought, you know, how can I get other people, not just from this school, involved in science? So uh, we run an adult class for um, members of the community, parents, teaching assistants, who might want to come and do their GCSE science. The children absolutely love her. They enjoy working for her, they want to please her, they do their best for her, and the reason why is because she makes all her lessons very, very interesting and makes them inspirational for them. At school I didn't necessarily want to do engineering, although it was my strong subject. The teacher I had for physics said, oh, why don't you go and be a technician? Oh, so I applied for Cambridge University and, of course, went to the engineering labs, which uh, wasn't really what I wanted to do originally, but in the end it turned out extremely good because it gave me a, a very broad background. When I became about 21 I decided that then it was time for a change. Having worked with Ian just in those few initial months it became apparent he was just brilliant for this job. He could do everything from building brick walls with his own fair hands to doing machining at uh, instrument making capability. He soon learnt all the tricks of low temperature physics. There would be no science for the Royal Society to honour if there wasn't technicians. The technicians are an important part of research and an important part of all university life. I'm very much an enthusiast. I love science. I find it incredibly interesting. I like programs, I like new initiatives, I like facts and trivia and I think one of the main assets of any science teacher is to pass on enthusiasm but most of all I feel my department and myself we are prepared to go the extra mile and I think the children appreciate that. Teaching is a hard job but we up in science we're always having a laugh, we're always having great fun and that's because Bob inspires us and pulls us together as a team and I think because of that we want to give that extra mile to the children and you can find us all up here after school hours revising or doing catch up and that's because he, you know, he leads us and we want to do our best for him and we all want the best for the children so I think uh, the children are the winners and we're winners for working with Bob. Coming to a school uh, as a science technician was a total change for myself. I can design and deliver practicals that have some relationship to what actually happens in industry. Without Chris's specific contribution, bringing that knowledge of working in a real science lab, working as a research scientist, bring that into the classroom, that really made it um, much more authentic for students rather than being a course which just paid lip service to being vocational. My skills wouldn't necessarily have worked in other research centres, but it works well with this particular team. And I, I don't think that I'm anything particularly special. I think the team is. And in this centre in particular, I'm highly delighted that we've, in effect, been recognised by the Hawkesby Award because, I mean, they are very special to me. And I think my team do exceptionally well in making sure everything's covered and in helping the researchers as much as they can to move on to progress the research and the aims of both the centre and the institute. The personal qualities that Sharon brings to her role are impressive. She's very intelligent. She's actually 
was a very good scientist but chose to move into support and management. She's got immense patience, she's very diplomatic, she can be decisive and she can add up. I've been teaching now for nearly six years. Uh, I used to be a scaffolder, um, I'd always wanted to be a teacher um, but I ended up in the end um, biting the bullet and becoming a teacher uh, and from day one I've absolutely loved it. When I received the letter, I was very, very surprised. I did think that it was a wind-up. I didn't think that a prestigious society like the Royal Society would want anything to do with me. Uh, and I'm very honoured and humbled that I've received such an award. Everybody likes to pat on the back, but for this Oaksby Award, I really feel I'm being appreciated for the work I've done bringing science to our school and the community. And one of the challenges for schools these days is to make subjects as interesting as possible. And with a teacher like Kerry, uh, his passion and love of science means that he is able to share with youngsters um, science outside the classroom. And I feel I can answer the question, has your teaching been worthwhile? Did you make a difference? And I'll just show the Oxby medal and say yes, it did. I am very proud to have won the Hawkesby Award and also I am very honoured to have been put up for it. When the, the emails came around and said, have you got an, an unsung hero, they suddenly thought of me and put me in for it and thought, oh no, no, no I, don't, I don't like to be the centre of attention, I like being in the background. But to be honest, I'm, I'm really tickled pink. <laughs> I think the engineering team sometimes feels that we don't always get all the recognition we need and I think Trevor is a prime example because he's been working here for many, many years and has been absolutely central to so many of these great missions. I was enjoying the job so much I decided to apply to become an advanced skills teacher and I got that and that's just given me a whole new lease of life. One of the things I expected to do is outreach. So one day a week I go out to other schools wherever I'm wanted, all over the county. Sometimes I'm supporting other teachers but a lot of the time I'm working with uh, other schools teaching. I do electricity, I do space, I do forces and it's just brilliant. Working with uh, 10, 11 year olds is just magical because they love it, they're enthusiastic, they're very, very appreciative. And I guess I do feel like a bit like a Hawksby, someone who's not in the limelight themselves, but who hopefully is going to be pushing forward and encouraging other people to be in the limelight. That's what it's all about.